Do you want to become healthier and eat more fruit? Have you questioned whether fruits are a good component for your daily consumption or are you concerned of the sugar intake? Do you prefer to consume fruit in juices or smoothies or rather eat them as a whole fruit? Or do you struggle to factor in fruit into your daily consumption? Are you concerned that fruit is more likely to be GMO? Are you considering intermittent fasting or currently do? How do you break your fast or do you need some advice on the best techniques? If any of these questions resonate for you, then tune in to today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to episode six, A Fruitful Life. Today, we have a special guest with us, one of the founders of Dream Fruit UK, Connor Malcolm. Hey, Connor, we're really happy to have you here. And just a bit of background on Dream Fruit UK. In the first lockdown of 2020, Connor Malcolm and his partner Ben began experimenting with various ingredients, making healthy drinks and gummies. Over time, he started exploring exotic fruits. In July 2020, Connor and Ben launched their first exotic fruit variety box, and by September, they had more orders than they could even physically manage. The end of 2020 brought about an e-commerce boom. Dream Fruit has a range of fruits and assortment boxes customers can subscribe to, receiving regularly. They are fortunate to be one of the few businesses experiencing growth in such an uncertain time. We are con- they're conducting research into the benefits of fruits they sell, building a B2B client list and diversifying the fruit range. Their mission is to enable people to fulfill their dreams and fruit for fuel and, ex- and provide expert knowledge to guide and support their customers. So with that being said, welcome, Connor, to the episode of Fruitful Life. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And um, it's kind of crazy how we're here right now, right? Because I think I've only met you like, a, like, is it a couple of months ago? So I was telling Joanna, I want to consume more fruit, but better fruit, organic fruit and tropical fruit. And being someone from uh, the background I am, where I've got African, Indian, Portuguese influence, you know, I'm more a tropical fruit type of gal. And when I found Dream Fruit, I think it might have been some good marketing that you guys did because it popped up on my timeline. So I did see you guys on Instagram and I was like, I need to go back to that. And then I went and then looked at some of your content. It was really eye-opening. I think I showed Joanna and I was like, yo, these guys do boxes. She was like, what? Who are they? <laughs> so then I was like stalking your page a bit. And then I said, right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for the kill. Like I'm going to try and order something. And then you obviously have great customer care and consideration. I think you called me up about my first order. We were talking and I think we had a lot in common. And yeah, I think that's why we're here today. So I just want to say thank you for being here. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me once again as well. I mean, it's, it's um, really exciting to be around um, high vibration and positive energy people. Um, that's what I thrive off. That's what helps me to grow. And that's the energy that I promote as well. So, um, yeah, it was interesting um, how we how we met or met over the phone. Um, I think there was a problem with your, your first order. And yeah. when, <laughs> whenever there's a problem, um, I like to be all over it like a rash. So, um, yeah, I mean, getting in touch uh, by phone by actually calling as opposed to sending emails always works better because we can sort of find out what really went wrong. We can dig into it a little bit more. And, and also it's, it, it creates a relationship. And I've done this so many times. I almost like it when there's problems because there's <laughs> opportunity in problems. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I love that opportunity and problem statement. But you said something that just had me smiling and I'm trying to contain the smile when – you said, I love being around high vibrations and Joanna and I, right, Joe, we are all about that. Absolutely. I am really excited to get into this one today. Not because it's about food and I'm a fat, fat fatty, but <laughs> it's about fruit, which I love. I love fruit. And I think this is a really, really interesting topic. So I want to say, let's get into the the juiciness of it. <laughs> So, Connor, I'm going to ask you, what was your inspiration to start Dream Fruit UK? Um, that's, a, that's a very interesting question because I tried to sort of identify what inspired me. And I think it's, I've, I've just, I have an entrepreneurial hunger 
and a real desire to create and build um, something of my own. And I've been trying um, and failing for the, and I'll, I'll confidently say failing because failure isn't a, a bad thing. I've been trying and failing for the last seven, eight years um, at different things. But we came into lockdown um, in the UK in March 2020. Um, I think it was just before my my 28th birthday, and I had I came across, uh, yeah we had a lot of time on our hands, um, and so um, I was thinking what can I do to earn money? What can I do to build my empire? And I was thinking, thinking, thinking with no luck, um, and so I just started acting on the things that excited me most and. Uh, uh, somebody told me a while ago to always act on your highest excitement and mm. uh, I followed I followed that that wisdom and one thing led to another um, and um, I started selling fruit so I don't think there was a, a specific inspiration there was it wasn't like somebody around me got ill and I wanted to help them or anything like that it just it uh, naturally happened I mean I love fruit anyway I love uh, smoothies and, and and juices anyway so I spent a lot of time um, a lot of my free time in, in lockdown in the mornings making making smoothies um, and I started in I started experimenting with different ingredients with no expectation on the outcome just my just for my own satisfaction and I started looking at different um, fruits and I came across uh, dragon fruit, uh, which I had before, about three years uh, pre previously, and I only had it once. Um, and I, re I really liked the idea of the fruit. I liked the texture. I liked the taste of it. And so uh, that the curiosity uh, really kind of led me down, uh, pulled me into a rabbit hole of, of ideas and um, experimentations. And I really got lost in the, the um, lost in the uh, kind of excitement of the fruit itself. I love that. Can I just say what better idea, like innovative idea than to bring exotic fruit to the UK? I think that's just a fantastic idea, like making it available to the masses. So I love the fact that you, you did that yeah. because as we know, like exotic fruit is normally grown in like sunny sunny locations right and it's not as accessible in con certain countries so I love the fact that you came up with that especially dur during what I call the pandemic. um you really <laughs> <laughs> you you actually utilize your time which is what I was saying to everyone that that was the best time to get creative and start thinking of new ways out do you know what I mean so yeah. I love that I love that you was able to kind of kick start something so great yeah yeah i mean it, and that's that's the thing about um life really i mean there's timing uh, everything happens um at the right time and so <laughs> lockdown uh presented itself as a uh as a negative and mm. really really if you read between the lines and if you don't get sort of brainwashed by uh the news and everything there's just opportunity that's all it is, opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I just think, you know, like you said, the news and the media and like Joanna said, pandemic, you really stepped up the game to really do something that's innovative, but that's needed. I think a lot of people, if they weren't waking up before this COVID pandemic, they started to, some were being called to just like, hello, like connect to your higher self. and one thing that they kept saying was like, yeah, go wash your hands. Don't touch each, touch other, stay away from each other. They never really said, actually, you can create your own immunity, eat well, look after your body, eat fruit, eat veg, you know, be careful of what type of, you know, food you consume and give, you know, more prevention is better than cure. So mm -hmm. having a fruit business, that's what caught me. And I was like saying to myself, oh, I've become plant-based. So my aspiration around finding something that was going to be helping my day to day was I fast. I want to just eat more, more plant-based things. Also, I don't want it to be like dosed up with GMO and injected. I want it to be ethically sourced and also help give back to other countries. So 
you guys are you're solving for many different um, areas. I feel. I just think it's not just that you're providing a great service. The, the tropical fruit is amazing, right? If some of us are from hot countries and you don't get the same, it doesn't taste the same. Joanna and I was talking about mango the other day, like. It don't taste the same, but you gave me a mango. I think it was a free one in one of my first boxes. I was like, Whoa, this mango is lit. My mouth yeah. was dripping. Like <laughs> it sounds a bit too much, too graphic. But I was like, whoa, I don't get mangoes like this unless I'm in Goa. And um, there's some rare mangoes in Goa as well. So yeah, it. I, I'm really glad about what you're doing and we want the best for you guys and uh, we support you. But like, how's the journey been so far? Because it's quite... It's been quite fast paced. If you think about it, what has it been a year for you? Uh, it's been eight months. It's been very fast paced. And just going back to what you said about the mangoes very quickly, the mango game in itself has so, like, there's so many different. Do you know what? I just want to send you mangoes right now. <laughs> We've got our photo mangoes in. We're <gasps> getting um, new mangoes in soon. Honey mangoes, which are my favorite. We've got Sindri mangoes. I think it was a Hayden mango, which you had um i think it was yeah hayden mango probably which you had but yeah um it, in terms of the journey july what's that eight nine months maybe it, if you include the experimentation period it's probably been about 10 10 months in total but yeah you're right in saying it's moved um very fast the journey so far has been uh beautiful it's been um yeah it's been fun it's been surprising it's been entertaining it's been there's highs and lows um as well um and that's one thing that i want to make clear for the for the listeners um although you might see um a business um sort of come um out of nowhere and and look really amazing and look like it's doing really well uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that that um, the customers or the clients don't don't see. Um, so yeah, there's been um, a lot of sleepless nights, um, a hell of a lot of sleepless nights. I have to say that again because uh, when we're sourcing and importing and buying the fruits, we don't do that um, in um, a normal nine to five period. That happens after <laughs> twelve o'clock. So that happens in the early hours of the morning. Um, so there's been yeah a lot of times where I've gone without sleep for over 24 hours, uh, but at the same time it's it, it, it's so I'm in love with it, and you have to fall in love with the highs and and the lows of your of your journey because um, there's definitely going to be lows, and if you can learn to love them, um, you will accelerate very quickly, and I think that's what what's happened in our case. Uh, I think my, myself and Ben um, have been um, challenged. Uh, we're challenged daily. Um, some of the earlier challenges that we have we had were sort of um, around. Uh, at first, we were giving away a lot of fruit to to, um, to customers to uh, sort of understand what fruits people like and to uh, create interest as well. And uh, you've got to think about finances when you're when you're doing that. Um, there's been challenges around um, actual physical space and location. For example, I started using uh, yeah, we started picking and packing in my parents' um, kitchen, and that was fine at first when we had five orders a week. But when you, when you get to hundreds, you can't physically <laughs> do that. It, it just doesn't work. So we needed bigger space, um, and to find. A bigger space when you're on a shoestring budget um, is is quite challenging. Right now, we are uh, we have a cafe that, that we use. Um, we don't own the cafe, um, but we are we've got an agreement with the cafe owner that we can pick pick and pack um, in in their space, and that just gives us the ability to to um, sort of spread out a little bit more um, and be more efficient with what we're doing. Uh, ultimately. Um, if I had to summarize how the journey has been so far, uh, I would say it's divine. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I would honestly say it's, it's, it's been a divine journey. Certain things have happened and I just have to say, wow, like that, that I have to put that to God. <laughs> I have to put that to God. Um, so many things happen out, out of the blue, um, crazy, fortunate scenarios happen out of the blue. When we launched in September, it was late September, early October, uh, we didn't have a website. 
we barely had a brand when it, wow in, in the first instance i was just the fruit man there was no dream fruit i just delivered fruits myself to to people's doors and spent five ten minutes having a conversation with them about it but um when we actually launched um or the week before we launched i met uh, a rapper called swarms and uh he was super interested in the fruit he took a little snap um and uh posted on instagram as well he's got a million followers um on his instagram and that literally blew us um we were getting inquiries i was taking orders through dms um and there's only a certain amount of orders you can take through dms before you start to get a headache and it's it's difficult to kind of match up whose orders who who's ordered what um so yeah swarms uh, posted us and orders were coming through and that was the first week that we launched the website and we just had literally we couldn't deal with the demand that we had we had to call people and say look you, you're going to get your order but it's just kind of going to come a little bit late uh, but for me that's a, a great uh, problem to have i met somebody called uh reese wabara um as well uh he or, uh, yeah, we gave him some fruits, um, gave him a promo box of fruits. Now, Reese Wabara has a has a brand called Manier de Voix, um, and I think it's oh, one yeah. of yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've heard of it, yeah? Of course, of course. I've got some of their clothes. They've done really yeah. well. <laughs> They've their, their yeah. e-commerce has been booming, especially mm-hmm. during COVID. I saw articles about you know the exponential growth, revenue yeah. wise. Yeah, he he's doing bits. Reese is doing bits and I greatly look up to him. I think, I think he's, he's a real inspiration. The fact that he's open and honest with how his business is doing, he puts up his figures. Or if you follow him yeah. on Instagram, you'll be able to see what his figures. I think on Black, Black Friday, um, he, he, revenue was a million pounds in the first four hours or something crazy like that. Wow. Yeah, he's an inspiration, that one. (laughs) Yeah, he is. He is. Um, And so when I met him, I said, I asked him, is there there ever a time or has there ever been times in the MDV journey that you've felt that more is happening than you can control? And he said to me, he chuckled and he said to me, um, if there was ever a time where I felt I was fully in control, I'd be very unhappy um and i think what he meant by that is the fact that there's so much going on and you have to be sort of thinking outside of the box troubleshooting and problem solving the fact that that is happening is a good thing absolutely and i have to just sort of interject there like you've said some gems in in that your answer to that question i'm glad you really came with a comprehensive um response the way you did because you said that the journey's been divine so far. Well, it's divine timing that you're on this podcast with us and we're called the Divine Feminines because <laughs> absolutely you're a divine masculine. And for us, we want to hear more from divine masculines, but we want the collective to come together. You've already mentioned positive vibes and just really, you know, consciously making, co-creating that life with universe. And you also mentioned being in love with the journey. It's not about Mm -hmm. a destination. And we talk about that. And I think you're living proof that, yeah, like things are going to be like rough, smooth, stuff's going to happen, but be, there's a passion. There's a love for this journey. I'm not trying to go, I need to get to that point. I love where I am right now and not being always in control. One of our earlier episodes for series two is about divine sacred energy, the divine flow And when you can get into that flow state, you understand there's a point of surrender. And I just feel some of what you've said, like meeting swarms, like that was, that was, it was aligning meeting, you know, other, other key people that have given you inspiration or just done something for you to receive, to help, you know, boost the brand. It was all very much aligned to your journey. So sounds like you you really are like taking the right path in life you you know this is your calling connor and ben like you're doing the right thing yeah as well he's not here today he's under the weather um it's not covid uh, i must add but uh, ben's been been instrumental in this journey as well ben joined um the dream journey in in uh october 
um, just before things went crazy. I, I wouldn't have been able to manage without him. Um, oh. He's somebody who I've been friends with him from the age of 10 years old. Uh, we went to school together and mm. we've, always, um, we've always had a good connection. We've always been entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. We've always been sort of, I'd say, misfits in the workplace in the sense that we never really wanted to work for anybody else. And it's always difficult for us to work for for. <laughs> Um, for other people we always wanted to have our own thing and um, like I said before the timing is divine and, and we, we've tried to do things in the past but um, it's, it's been a force I should say but this has been natural and it's come together like it, it was always meant to be um, and you say this is your this is my calling um, I definitely believe that uh, dream fruit is definitely um, a uh, checkpoint in my personal journey. Um, I believe uh, that the listeners right now um, are tuned in because um, uh, they're torchbearers. And what I mean by torchbearers is I, I fully believe this. I, I believe before we were actually born um, on this planet, uh, uh, what were we? We, we were um, whatever, whatever you believe. We were stars. We were um, in, in the cosmos. We were collecting pearls of light. Um, and uh, we've come here with a reason, with a purpose, and those pearls of light come to life at certain periods um, in your journey. And I, I believe when you walk your truth, when you act on your 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 intentions, and when you um, when you uh, follow your highest excitement, uh, the the light only gets brighter. And um, hence why uh, you guys have invited me here today. Uh, so once again, I'm going to express gratitude for that. And you know, one thing that stood out to me was when you said you and Ben, you know, you never felt content in whatever workplace that you was in. And I feel like the reason for that was because it's not your destiny. That wasn't your destiny. And those yeah. feelings is what pushed you to where you are today, which is amazing because listening to your, your story and how you guys got started, it just gave me so much excitement. It, I felt like it was me. I'm just like, oh my gosh, so I'm really <laughs> proud of you guys and the accomplishments you made and taking those steps and how everything aligned for you as well. Like, just look at that. The one person that you met that made that one post that drove in all those customers, like it just showed you how things could just skyrocket when you do things at the right time, right place. So yeah, well done, man, for, for your journey so far. I can't wait to see how you guys expand even more because I think you really will because of the type of business it is. I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't think there's many people doing what you're doing right now in the UK. I think there there are a few, and I think there's um, it's a growing market. I think the demand for exotic fruits is definitely growing. It's untapped and it's underserved as well. Mm -hmm. So mm. Um, I welcome other businesses to come um, and uh, take take their place at the table because uh, for me it's deeper than us just making a killing. Uh, we're not just trying to make a killing. We're trying to uh, change people's lives. And if there's businesses that that um, have the same kind of ethos and the same kind of um, calling as us, uh, I know they're meant to be here as well. Um, they are. They, I, I'm going to shout out a, another business as well, um, Nutrition Kings, um, who do something very similar to us. Uh, Colin uh, runs Nutrition Kings. He's... Uh, um, similar to me and he, he's got the same kind of uh, energy as me as well and, and I, f I feel like a lot of the time we compete with people yeah. uh, when there's no need to compete with people yes for example Colin's ideas and my ideas are different but fruit is is the is the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for fruit is the com common factor commonality uh, but uh, our means to get into our end destination are completely different. Uh, he's going to take one route and I'm going to take another. Um, and so uh, they're, they're, if you go in a supermarket and you go down the bread aisle and you see all the different brands um, of bread there, they're all, they're all able to survive. Um, they, they're not, they don't, there's not just one monopoly um, of bread. There's, yeah. there's, New different players in the market so yeah in in response to what, what you said Joanna um there are plenty more players entering I feel like there's one born 
one born every day. Ultimately. Wow, that's Not amazing. Here to, to stay, um, but some will. And yeah. those that will, we welcome to, to the table. Yeah, which is great, man. It's good. There's space for everyone at the table, yeah. like you said. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I do, I do, uh, and I, I'll be honest, when I see... Um, when I see people doing well, whatever whatever space they're in, whether it's fruit, whether it's some fashion, whether it's sports or athletics, I, I get motivated off of that. So that's why I always welcome competition because I'm just going to get motivated. Our ideas are going to are going to escalate, um, and we're going to do better because of it. So we welcome that. So with that being said, do you have any advice for any new businesses starting up, especially in like times like this that we're in with this? whole covid situation um yeah yeah i'd say um now is the time to seize the opportunity there's always opportunities um this has been the craziest time of most of our lives in fact pretty much all of our lives in terms of everything that's going on in the world now is the time to seize the opportunity uh there's less security um, in in a nine to five job uh, than than there's ever been. Um, you you could you people again put on furlough left right and center. I'm not sure what mm-hmm. you call it out in the states if it's called furlough if it's something else. No, uh, yeah, same same furlough. Yeah, um, people are losing their jobs, losing their livelihood. The only security, the only real security can come from within. Um, and that being said. Uh, anybody who's who's starting their their journey or anybody who's thinking about it do it don't be as don't be afraid to fail because we're all going to fail at certain times but failure isn't isn't the be all and end all it's a learning curve uh, if you see fa- failure as a as a terminal as an end point then you're not going to get far because you've you've limited yourself. But if you see failure as a point where you need to pivot or something needs to change, you're going to get very far because every time you fail, you're going to fail forward and you're going to fail further. Um, And those failures um, equal success in the long run because when you look back at the journey as a whole, you'll see how far you've come and you'll see how many times you've tripped and got up and how many times you've got over, you've got through challenges and, 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 um, and move forward. So, I'd say advice for anybody who's thinking about starting up or is currently starting up, don't be afraid to fail. Go on, chase your dreams and 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 live it out. I love that. I love the don't be afraid to fail. I think, you know, th- th- there's a couple of things that you've said. There's some gems, more gems. I, I love the way you're dropping the gems, the divine gems, but lack mentality. There is enough to go around for everyone. I think a lot of what we've been programmed is not now competition isn't a bad thing, but I like to say, compete with yourself. How do I become better or my business better than the day before? How do I grow rather than looking at what someone else is doing and going, no, no, I need to do this because they're doing this. Whatever they're doing might be an inspiration to you. So then you can think about maybe how you can be inspired to present something in a different way, or you might come up with ideas and also the failure part. Like, No one, if you see some of the greatest like geniuses of all time and some of the biggest creators, they never got there so smooth. They took so many trips, falls. Some people went bankrupt several times. There's so many compelling stories. And I think, I think it's just the human brain, you know, like, like you said, you have to be connected within. And if you understand that failure is part of the process and you trust the process, then it's just like, all right, cool. I'm wiser for it. Now I'm not going to make that mistake again. And I'm on to the next level. And then in the next level, and it's almost like a computer game, if anything, but you're just always just going through different levels and you're wising up, you're gaining more insight. And so I really like that, Connor. And I think you're right. We need to start thinking outside of our comfort zone. I think a lot of us think, oh, you know, we rely on that job. And a lot of people, and I'm going to say this, But a lot of people were put on furlough part time and stuff, but they were moaning about their job for the months that preceded COVID. I don't want to go to work. I can't wait till Friday. What is this thing about? I can't wait till Friday. Like, why don't you enjoy every day of the week for what it is? But, you know, a lot of people were in jobs because it was more about paying the bills than it was really doing something they love. So I think COVID has also 
whether it's a pandemic or whatever, there is a positive to it that is push people to really think about what they want for themselves and push them out of their comfort zones. And sometimes if you don't close the door, universe has to close the door for you because there's a higher purpose for you. So I know some people lost their jobs and things like that, but they actually went and started their own business or they started a new um, source of learning to start a new career path that is going to be more viable. Like the digital space is booming right now. It's a lot of what I work in on my day career. It's booming. Some of it's really booming. So there's there's lots of contrasts of what's going on, but I want to kind of pick your brains and I'm hoping you're going to share the, the, the scale of your growth has been phenomenal, right? So I can imagine you're already innovating the new developments and I'm hoping you'd share a bit. I, I've obviously read and, you know, hearing from you that you guys are looking to become a wellness accountability partner to mm-hmm. offer consultations to customers and businesses. And I think this is so cool because there's so much to learn in this space. So would you share more? Yeah, so... Uh, it's always been a goal of mine to to move beyond um, selling fruit boxes to direct to customer. Um, I've always thought um, of sort of working uh, with businesses as well. Um, yes, firstly, because there's bigger bucks. And secondly, because we can touch more people, uh, we can affect more people and we can create a new sort of service, which is fun, a new new service that contributes to our mission of, of uh, providing uh, fruit for fuel as well so um yeah ultimately we are looking to uh become a wellness uh, accountability partner now what is that uh, that is a business that uh, works with individuals and other businesses to help their um staff to um uh, uh adapt to um uh, not adapt but to to develop a resilient mindset a healthier body and a more efficient uh, being and so uh, we've taken steps to doing that we're working with a uh, Premier League football team currently um, and uh, that's really exciting I can't say the name of the team as of yet I really want to shout and scream about it right now but wow that's so cool <laughs> yeah um, for, for us we want to be actually going in uh, speaking to uh, heads of departments about um, how they are managing their staff's well-being and, and offering uh, solutions and offering um, a f- not just fruit but diet plans um, and uh, nutritional re- regimes to to help uh, to help the people as well. So that's um, that's our goal. That's not too far away. But there are certain things that we want to achieve uh, before we get there. Uh, Part of uh, my personal challenge is understanding that uh, I can't do everything at once. And I've got uh, what's been referred to as popcorn brain. Um, Ideas just pop left, right and centre. That popcorn (laughs) is my brain. I can't help it. I, I, I struggle to tame it. I struggle to sleep at night because of it. But there's so many things that we want to do. But first, we've got to put first things first. And I think the next thing for us to achieve um, as a business is to um, secure a premises, um, sh- secure a shop. And um, in that shop, we will be selling our, our fruits, um, whole fruits, platters, smoothies, smoothie bowls, um, teas, coffees, etc. Um, and that's something that we'd like to do within the next next three months. Um, I like to be open and outspoken with my goals because I believe in speaking it into rea- reality. And the more people that hear it, uh, are the more people that can hold me accountable to it. So, yeah, that's that's our short term goal. Uh, but in the long term, we we will be working with individuals. Um, I think, Steph, you're, you're on at the moment. You've got um, a self prescription pack with us. Now, the self prescription yeah. pack allows customers to choose the fruits that they want to receive on a regular basis. Um, how regular you determine it, you determine it. Um, but uh, uh, as part of that self prescription service, um, we are working with a, a nutritionist, uh, Gabby Zaro. Um, and you can search her up. She she is based in uh, Lithuania and UK. 
Um, uh, she's a, a, a registered nutritionist who um, works closely with us to develop our fruit benefits and to sort of work on our macros and to develop our pitches to, to businesses and anything else that we need to do that's scientific. So she handles the scientific arm of, arm of things. Um, now, um, the plan is for us to um, get as many people as we can on, onto self-prescription packs so that we can work with them to achieving their, their goals and their, their ambitions. Um, and uh, for, for us, that is um, not so far away. We've got many people signing up to the self-prescription pack um, at the moment. It doesn't work as we would want it to right now. Um, there's a few teething problems with it, but you can still get your fruits on a regular basis and you can still be consulted um, on, a, on a regular basis as well. I'm just a perfectionist when it comes to the automation um, of, of the, um, the, the web side of things. So, um, yeah, we, I mean, we're getting there and we are, we are fully positioned to help and support people um, to become more healthy and more mindful and and um, just just better beings in general. Well, that's really cool and exciting, right, Joanna? Yes, definitely. First, you I think you taught me something there about the popcorn brain. Now I can diagnose <laughs> my condition. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of you, you know, I was like, I, yo, she's been <laughs> popping and I, I had to contain her. I, I sometimes, I put her in a glass jar in my head, but she doesn't know that. So I'm like, just, just write it down. We, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love this. Your ideas are amazing. Um, I love the fact that you're spreading vitality to the masses. So yeah, man, this is great, great news. Do you have um, any launch dates in mind or not yet? Um, well, uh, as soon as we um, find the premise that we are happy with, then we'll, we'll definitely put a launch um, launch date out there and we'd like to do a launch event as well. Um, I can't be as forthcoming with the dates as I would like to be as of yet as we need to to get certain things in place and we're still working on on some of the plans. So you guys are hearing it first and you're hearing it early. Yeah. So. I'm coming to the launch. I'm definitely there. I'm there. I'm there. Please, please, please. I, I want to come. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is super exciting. You've got some serious goals and things that are coming to fruition. Excuse the pun. But... It is very exciting, and I and I really want. I, um, we're excited for you guys. I I really actually enjoy getting my fruit box every week. So, I have to say one thing, right? And we'll come on to it a bit later. But because I've been receiving your box every week now, I'm not really interested in eating much food. So I'm kind, and I never I fast a lot, and we'll come on to that topic a bit later. But because I've got such high quality, tasty, delicious, juicy fruits, I'm like, yo, like. I am so grateful for this and my body is just happy to have it. I don't know. Like I, I'm not really eating much cooked food. So for me, I mean, it's a game changer. It's actually making me more enlightened because I'm very spiritual. And this is why we're here as well, part of this podcast. But I think in recent weeks, yeah, those downloads be coming through in the meditation, you know, so <laughs> the fruits and the yoga and all of that good stuff that I've been doing, it, it's part of this like grounding the balance and my own self union kind of focus. So Connor, we're just excited. Like I can't wait for the launch. I can, vi- I can visualize it now. Yeah. Keep us posted. And when the launch is coming up, if, if, you know, if it's in the UK, if it's a limited VIP launch thing, then you know, you know I'm coming, right. And but <laughs> if it's open to more customers and stuff, then we can help, you know, promote it for you guys. So. Yeah. Yes. Love you. Thank you. So I want to kind of shift into more of discussion topics about fruit, because I think for our listeners, it's been fantastic to hear about what you've achieved and, you know, what you're achieving now and the growth. But now coming to the fruit of things, like for us to discuss as a group, you know, like fruit, sugar, Joanna brought this up before, but like people are concerned about fruit, sugar and think by eating too much fruit, they're going to be consuming too much sugar and therefore that's not actually a good thing. So this is quite common. Um, people uh, ask us about, about the sugars in fruits all the time. 
Um, first thing it's I have to make clear is I'm I'm not a medical professional. So um, if you see if you need medical advice, please consult your your doctor or your nutritionist or our nutritionist. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say it's important to uh, have a balanced diet. If you are eating fruit all the time, um, you can. Uh, if you're eating extreme amounts of fruits, you can do yourself harm. Um, that's the first thing I want to make make clear. You can do yourself harm by eating um, ridiculous amounts of fruit, but you'd have to try very, very hard to eat that that much fruit. Um, I would say uh, for a balanced diet, you need to include vegetables as well. Um, a, a lot of fruits can be uh, slightly acidic, uh, but vegetables, you can neutralize that, that pH balance. Um, the, the sugar in fruit is slow-release sugar, um, often slow release sugar, which means that um, unlike a coffee, you're not going to spike your glycemic index and um, be bouncing off the walls for, for an hour and then be slumped after that. Uh, it means that the, 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 the energy will be released slowly to you through the day, uh, which works for me. And I always um, advise people to eat fruits in the morning on, a, on an empty stomach because uh, that's when your body is going to break down um, the, the molecules best and, and um, your, your absor absorption rates are, are a lot higher um, for first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Um, I would say to anybody concerned about sugar, um, firstly, consult consult uh, um, a healthcare medical professional, um, but just be balanced with what you're doing. Eat vegetables as well. No, I think it's a really interesting, um, really interesting topic, right? Because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I can't, don't eat too much fruit. There's so much sugar. But I just think fruit sugar is completely different. Um, it's more of a simple sugar, right? So it doesn't require like insulin secretion to enter the cells. And I feel like we need it to create positive cell activity. And it's really interesting, right? Because I discovered, I swear, I think it was in 2017, I discovered that there's people actually that just live off of fruit. Like that's, This is who I want to be. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just live off fruit, fruit right? Fruit fruit yeah, fruit Yeah, fruit It's a thing. Yeah. And it's I, actually I a thing. And I, right. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? How? But I discovered, guys... This, there's a doctor, I think he's based in Florida, I think more up north Florida, and his name is Dr. Morris. And no lie, I watched some of his videos. If you kind of put in his name in YouTube or something, you'll come across his content. He has a lot of content, and it's really informative because I swear, like, he's healed people and reversed diseases wow. with just fruit. And I know I, one thing I remembered, actually, was, like, he's, like, a heavy – like, he was heavy – on um grapes he said like grapes have such amazing healing properties and that was one of the things he was like yeah like he's reversed certain things that people came to him with with just like simply grapes and I was like what how <laughs> do you know what I mean so it's really interesting um fruit is really interesting but yeah I just think people shouldn't really worry as much about the sugar from fruit because it's a simple fruit sugar and it doesn't have the same effect as glucose sugar, right? When you're getting that from like candy and stuff, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, I mean, because I've been sort of converted by dream fruit because the fruit's so good to become, I don't eat loads of fruit. So kind of like when I get the box, right? You know what I get, but I'll break fast with um, maybe one of the dragon fruits and maybe a kiwi or a passion fruit. And then I don't eat for several, like I don't need to eat straight away after that. I'll have like a matcha latte. And then lately I did it for a couple of days. I just didn't really eat. And then I had a fruit for dinner and that was it. <laughs> I did it. But, you know, I was just trying to see how I could push myself because I try to always test myself to see how well I can move. I wouldn't tell the listeners to start doing that because you'd want to start to integrate fasting and slowly, moderately do it. I've been fasting for like, over two years, like on a regular basis, almost every day. So, but I don't feel like I'm like going crazy or, you know, like I don't feel like highs and lows from the fruit. I actually feel really nice and light. So I probably could consume a bit more fruit, but I'm just seeing how much I can go without food. This is, 
I feel like I'm a star seed. Connor, you did say about, you know, earlier about, you know, we, some of us are from stars from out of, you know, outside of earth. And I resonate with a star seed. We can live off like solar energy. We can live off the sun. And I, now I can comprehend why when I, when it's hot, if you just give me sun, I don't need to eat. Just, I can drink some water and I'm fine. So, so yeah, I, I, and I do resonate with the fact that what you said, Connor, like too much fruit could be, you know, can have an, a detrimental impact. So, finding the balance but you know what's funny so the other day I bumped into my dad and my uncle on their you know their brotherly walk in the park and I stopped and I was chatting to them and they were talking so I started talking about you know because I'm always trying to influence them to eat better and take care of themselves because they're my dad's in his 70s my uncle's in his 80s god bless them but you know they my uncle has diabetes my dad has sort of like cusp diabetes and they were saying that they kept getting told by the doctors or, you know, you know, you can't eat fruit. Like you need to stay away from it. But they both had done their research. So they were like conversating about it and they were saying, well, yeah, like what we've seen and I've read research and I've been trying it out myself is that I've, you know, you can eat fruit and yeah, the blood sugar levels rise, you know, in the immediate few days, but then afterwards it normalizes and stabilizes. So it's not an always sort of, you know, inflated blood sugar level kind of impact. And they were like, so all this time I've been told the wrong thing. So, you know, it was just interesting, you know, these elderly men saying this and my uncle being diabetic for how many years, probably a good 40 years of his life. So I just wondered what you guys thought. Yeah. And do you know what? Um, you, you mentioned diabetes. Um, fruits have crazy health benefits some really crazy health benefits and i'm sure that the i'm sure that the government really doesn't want the, these health benefits to be to be known um to the yeah. to the general public because it wouldn't suit the pharmaceutical companies out there but um your, your dragon fruits your pitayas yeah so um they are very good for diabetes prevention um prickly pears are also good for for diabetes prevention i'm sure there's others as well that are good for for diabetes guava is good for diabetes prevention as well um and that's we've got a health benefit benefits pdf which i'm going to share with the both of you so you can have a look at that and and utilize that as you um as you will so uh, diabetes is, can be helped um by by fruit as well yeah that's so yes. interesting yeah, very interesting. Connor, you hit some nails on the head there. Like, I do believe that some of this information is hidden on purpose. Um, and one thing, Steph, that you mentioned, you know, that your your dad and your uncle, they went and did the research themselves. I was like, yes, <laughs> which is so good because this is the funny thing, right? I feel over the years I've come to realize that doctors, I don't think – that nutrition is a big part of their studies. Unless I found that unless they're like a naturopath mm-hmm. or like a holistic, they're more like into nutrition and the science into, do you know what I mean? They know a bit more about food where I think like the, the general westernized doctors, they don't really study nutrition like that, which is quite interesting. I think it's probably a little part of their studies. And this is why I think, it's important to do your own research because sometimes they can give you mis misinformation. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, stay away from fruit. Do you know? What I mean? Maybe they're talking about general fruit, like bananas or like GMO. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, like Connor said, there's many really um, good, healthy nutrients in fruit that can actually help support diabetes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've got um, a cousin um, who's really like my brother um who's a uh gp a general pr- practitioner um, um so he is uh, a medical professional and we um all well, we used to uh butt heads uh, quite <laughs> a lot um, because i'm more sort of um against the grain against the common consensus and he is def- definitely for that and by by the book uh, by the book type of person and um i mean there, there is a there is a healthy medium um which requires some open-mindedness but the problem is you you will get a lot of people who um are medical professionals who 
uh, won't uh, are very. In, and I'm not insulting anyone's intelligence here. Um, no, no, no. I'm just saying that people can be open-minded um, and should try to be as open-minded as possible uh, when it comes to when it comes to these things. And definitely to reiterate the point of doing your own research, uh, because when you do your own research, you will be surprised at some of the stuff which you you see and you find yeah absolutely agree and um i was you know when you think about the doctor if any for all of our listeners yeah just take stock of this when you go to the doctor you go with symptoms of something that you're not feeling great so my head's hurting my tummy's hurting i had diarrhea or you know i can't sleep at night what does the doctor do the doctor prescribes you something to stop what you said that you have like those feelings, those symptoms. That's what the doctor does. The doctor doesn't tell you what the root cause of it is. Now, Mm -hmm. if you turn it on its head, it's a paradigm shift, right? Like, so what's the root cause of you having the headache? Oh, maybe it is because you've been eating some really like unhealthy processed food, or maybe it is because you're stressed and it's your stress, you know, receptors in your brain going off and it's causing headaches. There could be so many things. The root cause of it though, is not unveiled. And that again, Connor, to your point, and you know, I'm just going to say it like the pharmaceutical business is a, it's a money-making, you know, venture with a lot of other businesses, but it thrives off the fact that it produces, you know, products, medicine to, you know, cure a symptom not to empower someone's body to be healthy and healthily immune to be stronger and more resilient right so it's a different solve for it's solving for something that is is like a problem rather than you know making someone healthier longer term so (laughs) you know and then on that point so I'm going to go for you Joanna because you I feel like you're the encyclopedia when it comes to this you're always telling me something (laughs) (laughs) And, and with that popcorn brain, but <laughs> I'm gonna call you Pop One and Pop Two, you two. Uh, <laughs> pop and Pop, <laughs> but um, Coco Pops. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. But um, with fruits, right? Like, there's so many healing benefits. Like, um, and you can probably we mentioned diabetes, but Joanna, like, what other healing benefits are worth mentioning when it comes to fruits or even veggies that are considered fruits too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure. they Okay, first of all, like fruit actually helps fight degenerated cells. So the minerals and vitamins from the fruit help with that. They hydrate skin, hair, organs, and it actually cleanses the digestive tract as well. So, you know, if you have anything rotten in there, it will help pass that through. But I'll tell you one fruit, right, that I discovered, like my background, of course, is from the Caribbean, right? My mom's from Guyana, and she tells me a lot about different fruit that they um, they used to eat and stuff. And, oh, this is good for this, and this is good for that. So one of the things that she told me, and I think there's other names for it, soursop, right? That was one of the fruits she told me. And that actually is a really powerful fruit because it has a lot of antioxidant antioxidants in it and it's known to fight cancer cells so i'm like hmm why is it this a pop and why is not it talked about more often connor have do you sell um sour sap in your boxes yes. We do sell sour sap. Um, it's not advertised on our website currently, and that's mm. because it's very difficult to get good quality sour sap um, mm. here in the UK currently. There's been times where it's been in abundance, but due to uh, tr- uh, flight restrictions and important mm-hmm. restrictions, um, we're in conversations with farmers in Jamaica and St. Lucia because the sour saps that we have had in the past have come from those countries. So we're looking to import um sour sap as, as soon as possible um yes. yeah i know sour sap is a, is, oh, is one of the, the the best fruits in terms of its uh anti-cancer uh qualities and i advise anyone who's listening if you don't know about sour sap go and do your research now well you know yeah. what i want in my box when that comes through <laughs> when you, you know like when you guys get like new stuff do you you know when the sour sap comes through you just i, I take a couple i'll drop one to my dad too <laughs> yeah man it's good it's good it uh, also helps with like inflammation i was told it's like high in fiber magnesium potassium so overall it's like a power fruit like i'm just like this is amazing so I always try to get my hands on some whenever I can. 
I just think it's great. Just pop it in smoothies or just eat it fresh. I love soursop. Love it. Yeah. You can also make juice with it as well. Um, mm. Quite commonly, they make, make juice with it. So they literally just just take the flesh of the of the soursop and mix it with some water, or mix it with milk, uh, put a little bit of, of your own sweetener in there um, and, and literally just squeeze it out with your hands. The juice is so nice. Yum. Mm, sounds nice. Yum. Also, also, I heard that um, the leaves are beneficial for tea. Yeah. So none of it is waste. <laughs> wow. You could use the leaves. Yeah, apparently it's really good. It has some good health benefits as well. The, the tea, uh, the leaves for tea from Sour Sap. Also, I heard mango leaves are really, I don't know if you guys heard that, but I heard mango leaves are really good as well. And mango, skin, and mango skin as well. You can boil boil some water with mango skin in it, which is really good for you as well. Really? Oh, wow. And look at all of those mango skins that we've probably thrown out in lifetimes. I know. <laughs> Do you know what? Often the skin is, is the most valuable part of the fruit. Yeah. Um, it's just difficult and not tasty sometimes, difficult to eat and not tasty, but a lot mm. of the time it, it does have good qualities. Yeah, I don't really, if you think about it, yeah, like if you eat a plum or a peach, you eat the skin, an apple, but mango and then papaya, you wouldn't really eat the skin of a papaya or a melon. So it's interesting, yeah. And seeds as well have a lot of, um, or some seeds have a lot of uh, good health benefits as well. Um, I hear, um, and maybe Joanna, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but some seeds are apple seeds. They produce that arsenic gas if you blend it. So be careful with consuming seeds. But I do hear that papaya seeds are really good for you. Rambutan seeds are really good for you as well, just to name a couple. Yes, yes. I hope um, papaya seeds are very good, uh, beneficial for you. So that's why sometimes I, I'll sca- scoop out some because there's so many in there yeah. and they're super bitter. But obviously they have a purpose for being bitter. I think they cleanse the digestive tract. They kill parasites as well. Yeah, we don't like those parasites. They're like creatures, aren't they? <laughs> so we need to get those out. Joanna, you were talking to me the other day about, and this is interesting. So when you come to the topic of like fruit, but training. So, you know, people that are like into like training and, you know, maybe more like want to be, want to be ripped and, and build their body up. And there was a trainer um, and you were telling me about him and how he was promoting fruit. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> no it was really cool so there's this guy um he's a fitness uh influencer i believe um he's vegan his name's nimai and he had posted a while back he had posted a picture of some fruit so i think he's into like bodybuilding and stuff like that and i know for sure like people that are really into fitness and they have a specific you know meal prepping plan and stuff like that they don't necessarily incorporate fruit it's mostly based off of protein like that's their main thing and I noticed on his post he had put something along the lines of if your trainer tells you to stay away from fruit you need to get a new trainer (laughs) which I thought was hilarious because I'm like wow to actually hear someone in fitness say that um, because that I think there's a big misconception around that whole idea of course like oh too much sugar you need to stay away from it so I thought it was really interesting that he actually brought up that topic um, yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's just, you, you can't leave out fruit out of your diet. I think you, you, you need to include you need to include fruits. Um, and certain fruits are good when you are training, for example, bananas and the potassium in the bananas are really good. But I'd recommend burro bananas, um, which are the, the small type of bananas. They're also known as uh, apple bananas or finger bananas as well. Uh, which are really good. You've got a lot of electrolytes in in fruit as well, which are good for um, training in the moment. Um, but also, um, there's fruits with with a lot of um, with a lot of protein as well. Um, I'm looking at the macros uh, document as we speak now, and I can see that one of the fruits with the most um, most protein is guavas. have a lot of protein in them. Oh, oh wow! I, I would have know. never known that though. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. That's good I'm going to send you this document as well, so you guys can have a look at the the macros in 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 fruits. Yeah, that would be so cool. Thank you. And I and I like the fact that this guy Joanna he's promoting that because I think you know 
there's so many heal- healing benefits. Like we've said, there's so much that you can gain from fruit. So it, it needs to be part of the diet, you know, within balance, like you said earlier on, Connor. Exactly. Yeah. One thing he said that like it was that stood out to me was that he was like, well, oh, stay. He said there's too many bro scientists out there giving BS advice off of their own like perception. But I thought it was really um, informative. The base of his post was telling people, go and do your own research and find the truth for yourself kind of thing which is good yeah you can get influenced too much by people's opinions and I think people's opinions and the media squash all that go and find out for yourself and then tune into what resonates and that's like your higher self or your intuition going yeah this is right you know go in this direction I think everything in life not just fruit but even decisions and everything else that comes with it right guys yep I agree 100 percent so My next topic that I want to bring up (laughs) is GMO fruits. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys this one thing, right? There's two fruits that I am struggling, and I don't know if you guys are having the same thing um, happening in the UK, but I am finding it really hard to find watermelon with seeds. I'm just seeing, every time I go into the grocery store, I'm just seeing seedless watermelon and the other fruit that I'm finding it hard to find with seeds is grapes I'm like do these not exist anymore <laughs> what's happening no, you so, need to leave the U.S. right no I don't know what's happening. The US. <laughs> it's crazy even in whole foods like I'm not finding grapes with seeds and watermelons with seeds it's just seedless and I'm just like mm, how does it grow if it doesn't have seeds yeah. so obviously it's GMO and yeah I want to know you guys' perception on this um Do you guys have the same issue? Yeah, well, we do with grapes. Uh, Watermelons, we've still got seeds in them over here, uh, as far as I'm I'm aware anyway. Uh, But grapes, uh, last time I've had a a seed in a grape, I can't can't tell you. Um, Oh, wow. For that reason. Really? Connor, I think you're living in the wrong part of the UK. Come to North London. North London's got seeds. Uh, Give me (laughs) some then. I'll bring some to the launch. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've struggled. I've struggled. And even even at the wholesale markets for fruit, where you'd expect to see a diverse range of of grapes, Mm. uh, the ones that are commonly being presented to us are the the seedless ones. So I definitely need to move to the the north side of town, um, (laughs) (laughs) the way way you are, Steph, because I'm, I'm struggling. Um, at the moment and I I do think it's something that um, is sort of uh, well there's no shortage of fruits in this world it's just what what we're what's being pushed in our faces right yeah and you've got to look at the the um, hidden agenda oh you said it took the words out of my head yeah yeah Yeah. you really got to look at it and it's a shame but the the way money corrupts is is crazy, um, and somebody is benefiting from uh, pushing seedless grapes. Someone's benefiting from pushing seedless watermelon. Uh, mm, yeah, I mean, you might get other qualities that that people like, um, that people are sort of that people view over the fact that it's not got seeds. So they might pre- present you with grapes that are sweeter and and um, in that sense, they might be more desirable because people aren't woke to the fact that um, grapes without seeds are, mo- are most likely to be GMO. But I mean, it's I, I can only see that problem getting worse. Yeah, for sure. Another question, something that I've noticed as well, is that sometimes I would see the organic stickers on these very same products, like uh, organic watermelon seedless. I'm like, but how could it be organic if it doesn't have seeds? Like, am I missing something here? I'm yeah. like, I generally confused. Like, what's happening? That's another another one. That's another challenging one. The problems that, that we have with organics is they're not they're not as widely presented as well um, as as uh, the non organics. I don't know how you can have something that's um, organic and and doesn't have seeds. That beats me. Um, mm. but, but I yeah. do know that. Um, I mean, for, we've got to look at it this way. So, um, a lot of African farmers uh, don't use pesticides, um, and uh, basically, uh, they want to import 
their, or export their fruit around the world, but they have to um, fit into certain criteria to be able to uh, export that fruit wherever it is, let's say for example, for argument's sake, it's apples, they want to import apples to the UK, but because they're not using pesticides, if um, DEFRA, who's a test, their te te fruit testing agency, if they find that um, some of these fruits contain uh, pesticides, they will um, dispose of the whole container of fruits, which is very expensive and mm. potentially financially crippling to the uh, to the growers and to the farmers. And so it's sort of blocking the, the bureaucracy of the fruit and veg in industry blocks organic fruit from reaching our supermarkets and um, um, reaching our kitchens ultimately. It's interesting because when you said hidden agenda earlier, Connor, like there's a money, there's a money making kind of profitable, you know, area of doing this, right? So someone's gaining, but also if you're giving fruit to someone and they think they're consuming fruit, but they're really not getting the full consumption of vitamin C or whatever the nutrients are, or they're actually just kind of eating the fruit, but it's just kind of almost dead weight. They're not really being empowered. And if they are being injected with other kind of chemicals, those chemicals could actually have the reverse sort of more you know, impact health wise to the person and also their sort of their mind and everything else, which puts people into a more vulnerable state, which I think is also part of the agenda. I, I, I believe that the, the food you consume has a vibration. Yeah. Uh, uh, if if you're consuming something that's been tampered with, something that's been processed, the vibration is going to be very low. Uh, but if you're uh, eating something with, with, that's natural and has been exposed to um, sunlight and has been grown in, in great um, in great conditions, that vibration is going to be high, and you're going to inherit that that vibration as well. Yes, yes. It's so funny that you mentioned that because, you know, raw, ripe, sun-kissed fruits actually contain an abundance of carbon, which feeds our cells. So it makes me wonder, you know, these GMO fruits, they're not getting that natural sunlight and getting that carbon um, that it needs. Do you know what I mean? Which is feeding our, our body, our body cells. So it's like, hmm, what nutrients are we getting from this GMO? <laughs> Nothing. Like it decreases, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. People have to watch out for it. One time, I was in a in the walking through a wholesale market, and I saw um, a box that said uh, non GMO on it, and it just made me think that like, they're, they're actually advertising themselves as non GMO, and to me, that's 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 insane because the fruit that we pick up should be non GMO anyway. Yeah. Well, they've, they've tried to distinguish themselves by um, stating the fact that they are, our fruit's clean. Um, so what does that mean for the rest of the, <laughs> the fruit that's in the market that doesn't have that packaging? <laughs> exactly, exactly that. And also like fruit that's already chopped up into like plastic containers, right? I'm going to be honest, I'm going to put my hand up. When I was like younger, younger years, I, I wanted to eat fruit, but I couldn't be bothered. And a lot of people take it for convenience when you're at work, go to M&S or wherever, Waitrose, pick up any supermarket, pick up, you know, it's already sliced up in a little container and it's easy to consume. But I've seen on some programs that actually for it to be able to be in those containers, they've been sprayed and all kinds of other things on them. So then you get to like with those what those fruits they're probably even worse like you're probably just consuming a whole load of spray and chem chemicals that were an addition to the sprays and chemicals that were put on the fruit originally because they're gmo so yeah the other day my dad put down the plastic pot of mango and he said i said to him you know that's not good and then he put it down he was like okay and he looked at me and he felt guilty, <laughs> but it's good, right? Like little changes makes us realize, I mean, my dad was born in Africa. They were just picking up whatever they wanted from people's gardens or from their garden. You know, we, in Goa, we, our gardens all have fruit trees, you know, papayas grow in the back garden and, and coconut tree. So that's our roots, right? And now, you know, I'm not blaming the Western world, but we come to the Western world and we have to trust it. You know, whereas yeah. before we were growing our own stuff, you know, we were our naturally 
on our own land, our own fruits and everything. So I, I do see sometimes when I speak to my dad, I think there's that, you know, the he's got that in him, ingrained in him, that he grew up with all their own fruits and veg, like on their own land, because it was natural back then. Everyone had the land to do it. So, yeah, it's interesting. Well, Steph, you know what? It's so funny you mentioned that because – I remember at one point, my mom told me, she was like, don't buy the pre-cut fruit in the containers because I think maybe she saw it on the news or maybe one of those doctor programs where they said, um, you know, amongst that area, like where they're chopping up the fruit and stuff, that's where the most bacteria spread. And Ooh. like, I think, yeah, it's really interesting. I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, apparently, I don't know where they're chopping up this, the fruit the surfaces and then I guess they did some tests and they found that I think it was like melons because mo- over here there's a lot of um pre-cut melons that they do I think papaya and stuff like that and they said they found on the watermelon it had a lot of bacteria when they did the test or something like that so she's like don't buy it pre-cut <laughs> so I was like okay okay she's like yeah because it's, it's not good which brings me to the next question actually do you guys wash your fruit like, do you clean your fruit before consuming it? Yes, I I wash my fruit before before I eat it, um, and uh, the reason why I do that is because um, I know that this fruit has passed through many a hand before my own, um, and I don't know what people what parts of people's bodies they're scratching before they're touching. Oh. <laughs> do, do you know what I'm gonna be honest so I always wash fruit but recently I've been going in like I've been in, not not that I've been overthinking it but tap water is full of fluoride right and that blocks our pineal gland and I don't use tap water I even make pasta with uh, bottled water certain bottled water because some bottled water isn't also good as well so yeah I was saying to Joanna oh no I think I'm gonna have to use that same water to just wash some of the uh, fruit because yeah, uh, you don't know what places of the body some people are scratching before they pass the fruit yeah. around, Connor. <laughs> yeah, no, I have to put it like that because it, that really is what it is for me. I don't know where they've, what they've done what they've before. And I'm just going to sit here and eat this fruit. Um, I, I, no, I can't. But um, what I will say on that one is um, I read something recently. I don't know how true it is, but... Um, it's food for thought um, either way that when you wash your fruit um, you make it more susceptible to uh, bacteria and, um, and fungus um, uh, by washing it and I don't know if it, I, I, I want someone to to kind of tell me if that's true true or not I don't know how how true that could be well that's I think, very interesting yeah I think we're going to leave that one with you Connor if you can get the nugget and the insight on that, then you can um, post it up on I the Dream Fruit page. I yeah. will definitely look into it. But it, in my head, it makes some sort of sense because uh, sometimes fruit um, as uh, it's not strictly um, preservatives, but sometimes fruit, uh, they might put wax on a fruit. Like wax is quite common on oranges. Mm. Um, to protect it like a natural natural wax um but if you wash that off um i can imagine um and also if you leave the fruit wet as well i can imagine it being a good environment for bacteria to thrive um so i don't know i, I will look into it i will look into that yeah. do you know do you know something i normally do all right so with certain fruits for example like i like you said connor actually apples i've noticed there's a lot of fruit actually that has wax on it so what i do with apples i'll kind of soak them (laughs) i'm so extra i'll soak them with apple cider vinegar i actually use apple cider vinegar to clean my fruit and vegetables um but i do it i tell you what i'll do it before i consume them so Say, for example, if I buy raspberries or blueberries, I'll keep it in the container. But when I'm ready to eat some, I'll just put some in a bowl and then I'll put some apple cider vinegar and rinse it with some water. Um, Boom. Um, Because I I think I read somewhere or came across some information where it says that it's important to do that. One, because like you said, it's passing through multiple people and bacteria will thrive. Also, to get rid of any possible parasites or anything like that. 
um, I know with strawberries, I don't know if you guys ever seen that video. I think it surfaced like last year sometime. And it really put me off of strawberries. Like I want it to come out my head. Did you see it? Go on. Basically, it was a video that someone, I think it started on TikTok. And um, someone put strawberries in a bowl of water with some salt. I think it was just like regular table salt. Left it for a while. And then the worms started coming out. It was like drawing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it just really put me off because there was a few people that was like, wait, I got to try this to see. So that's for those reasons. That's why I was like, no, thank God I use um, apple cider vinegar to clean my fruits and stuff. And then with the wax, say, for example, apples, I'll soak them same way. And then I'll just take a knife and scrape off the wax because I know that the wax isn't good, you know, to ingest either. Mm. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is some of this stuff we, we well, a lot of people don't don't know um, this stuff. So I can imagine a lot of listeners right now have got their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good, right? This is why we, we're here and why we wanted you here. I wanted to wrap up on one final topic, which I'm sure there's a lot of listeners that are interested to learn about, but the topic of fasting and its relationship to fruit, because Connor, that's kind of where I feel like we hit it off when I was telling you, you know, because I, I'm buying the fruit from you guys because I break fast with my fruit. So that's when you told me you fast. So I just thought it'd be worth like asking you to share, you know, why you fast. And I think you also break fast with fruit. Why do you do that? And what what gains and benefits have you experienced from fasting? Well, um, I started fasting a number of years ago, and um, I typically, I usually do a three-day uh, fast, uh, th- which basically means that I don't consume any um, whole foods um, in that time, but I do uh, drink fruit juices um, and water. So I'll start the day with a fruit ju- with a blended smoothie, um, and I'll drink water through the day. Um, and the reason um, why I started doing that, I think it was down to, um, uh, this was about five years ago when I came across Dr. Sebi. And uh, Dr. Sebi was talking about some of the benefits of, of fasting, about, about your, your uh, cell replenishment, um, the mindset thing did it for me. So yeah. the discipline aspect of fasting uh, was really why I, I wanted to to fast, and I wanted to to sort of incorporate that into my into my um, routine. And I do a fast uh, once a year um, at the moment, but I want to up that to two or three times a year. Um, the reason why I haven't done it, I haven't upped it yet, is because I've just focused all my energy on on growing dream fruit. So I haven't been as healthy as you would imagine the founder of a, of a fruit. Um, a fruit business to be because I've been overrun with <laughs> with um, firefighting and all the things that um, running a small business uh, come with. So yeah, so I started fasting really mainly to uh, work on my on my discipline. And um, for me, the effect that it had is um, really it's crazy. I mean, um, after I fast, I feel a lot more grounded. I feel a lot more centered. Um, I feel a lot more focused. Um, and for me, those things are, are key. My grounding and my focus um, are key. And those are things that I don't play with. Uh, when it comes to focus, I really try and steer myself away from anything that's going to gonna divert my attention from the end goal. Uh, and when it comes to grounding, um, I'm meditating uh, probably about four or five times a week at the moment. Um, and it's worth saying I meditate with binaural beats as well. I don't know if you guys are are familiar. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. Um, and when I finish my fast, I'll, I'll eat fruit as well because I know that uh, my nutrient consumption is going to be a lot higher after um, or, or after I finish fasting. There's no point in fasting and then going and eating some heavy food after that. It mm-hmm. just kind of defeats the purpose of doing it. So I, I would advise any any listener um, that hasn't tried fasting to um, uh, to start if you are if you do want to fast, don't go too crazy straight away. Yeah, uh, 
um, on my first experience of, of fasting, I hadn't eaten in a day. It was day two. Um, I went in the shower. I had a really long hot shower. I came out of the shower. I thought I was going to collapse. I had to hold on to the, <laughs> to the wall. As, as all, yes. um, so, yeah, just kind of uh, be careful with it. Make sure that you don't have to do too many things um, on, on the day that you're fasting. Um, there's somebody that I know that does a complete dry fast. And uh, she's probably, um, I'm going to give her a shout out as well. Her name's Paris Petgrave. Um, she is uh, an, an entrepreneur. She's a tech entrepreneur. She um, is probably one, one of the most inspiring people, people that I know as well. And she did a uh, dry fast. And um, her purpose of doing that was for spiritual elevation. Mm-hmm. So there's many reasons why people might fast. My main one is, is um, the, the discipline and the grounding. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, you've really like highlighted some really key points. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, today, I've only had a passion fruit. When I did break fast, I broke fast with a passion fruit and half of one of your Kiwanos, Milanos, and mm-hmm. that's it. I haven't had anything yeah. else and I'm fine. And, and yeah, and I've, I think what I'm trying to say is, and it's not me showing off, right? It's, it's what you said, Connor. You have to slowly test it out. But because I've been fasting almost every day, so I do like 16, 8, sometimes 24, 20 and then 4, or you know, 18 and then 6 hours eating. I mean, not eating for six hours con- continuously, but you know, you guys know that in those six hours you you will eat, you'll consume. But because it's been, it's like an every, it's it's become a way of life for me. So then I'm in a position where I'm pushing myself a bit more, not pushing myself, but just seeing how much my body can go with bare minimum. And so I would just, to your point, Connor, what you said to the listeners is slowly do it because you almost collapse. And I know that feeling. I've had moments where I was just like, whoa, I feel dizzy. I need to lie down. I feel weak. Um, so don't go too extreme. But the benefits, so the reason why I chose it was I wanted to connect more spiritually with myself but I also wanted to have gratitude for the food we consume. I think people eat sometimes out of habit, out of boredom. And when you fast and then you break fast, you really like, I, 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 for me anyway, I'm like, you really appreciate that piece of food. And then it doesn't make you greedy. Like you don't want to eat. Some people think, oh yeah, cause you're fasting. Then when you break fast, you're just going to eat tons, but actually that's not the case. And there is this humbling of like this gratitude and a humbling towards the food. And on top of that, when you do break the fast and you do eat, you want to eat the best food. Hence why I've, I'm one of your customers. And, you know, I'm always continuing going, okay, what am I putting in my body? Because now I'm going to put something inside me. Well, this needs to be divine because I'm divine. So, yeah, it's helped me with meditation. Um, I have a very uh, busy career um, and I'm a senior leader of a, a really great company and we, it's fast paced, you know, and what I've noticed since I've been fasting is because I hardly eat through the day when I'm working. So I might just break fast about three, four, sometimes five, sometimes, maybe sometimes one PM, but I'm super sharp. I can run meetings, present, delegate to the team, plan work, do work. Like I'm like, I'm a machine. So concentration levels when you, when you fast are phenomenal and even ideas and inspiration, it's phenomenal. Like creativity is phenomenal and it strengthens your mindset. And it really, the point of discipline, I agree, really disciplines you. It shows you, it shows you the fact of you can step out your comfort zone and you can step out a bit more and a bit more, and you can really ground yourself in that. So yeah, I agree with you, Connor. And, um, thank God for your fruit because it's making my fasting even more pleasurable. And Joanna, I'm going to pass this one to you before we wrap up. You did a fast recently and it was really interesting because it was just like you, you did it for several days and then you went on some herbs and some fruit, like you went on this hippie fast. Like I want to, <laughs> I want you to share why you did it and the value that it gave you. And, you know, just to yeah. open everyone's eyes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So basically, I generally do um, intimate fasting anyways, right? So normally, I'll have my first meal of the day, um, which is normally fruit, 
uh, about 11, 12. And then I wrap up 7, 8 p.m. That's when I stop eating. So I recently did a water fast. (laughs) And let me tell you, the detoxification symptoms was like death. So I know what you mean, Connor. (laughs) when you're when you said you almost collapsed because literally I think the first few days were like the most roughest for me yeah it was tough I was like getting headaches but these are all they're not necessarily bad signs it's signs that your body is like removing those toxins etc so it's actually really good so I did water for the first few days and then I just went on to fruit and the reason why I did it guys is because for a few reasons, of course, you get a whole bunch of benefits when you when you fast, right? You're cleansing your body, um, the mind body soul connection as well, right? For spiritual reasons. For me, it was because I felt like I needed a cleanse. I was starting to break out on my chin area. Um, at first, I thought it was because of wearing the mask consistently, right? Because we're in COVID, I'm like this this COVID's messing up my face. <laughs> but um, I started to notice. I started to get a few spots on my forehead. And for me, this is not a common thing. I never really had any skin issues. So I was like, okay, I feel like this is something internal. Let me, let me do this fast. So yeah, I did it. I jumped on the fast, then started just eating predominantly fruit and trying to stay 90% raw. So eat less cooked foods. So fruit and I'll do like salads and stuff like that. Maybe I'll have like a, a veggie patty or burger or something like that to go along with it. Then, um, after that, I just started to incorporate some herbs, like cleansing herbs into my diet. And I've seen a major, major difference ever since. So yeah, fasting is a really, really good thing. But like Kana and Steph said, I feel like you have to go into it slowly. Don't just jump into it because those detoxification symptoms are intense. And yeah, you really need to make sure that you do it probably when you have some time off, when you're able to rest and let your body just do its thing. Thanks, Joanna. And uh, yeah, another thing is, is that you might find yourself when you first start fasting that you get sweats in the night. That's the detoxification. And you also might feel cold uh, because I've been pushing my fasting even more like to the limit. I've been feeling cold even in that day that we had like 20 something degrees. I was warm outside as soon as I stepped inside my house. It the, the heating was I had to put the heating on. I was like, what's going on? I was like, oh, it's the it's it's what the body does. So it starts to your body cools down because it's burning through visceral fat. So it's very interesting. Whereas when your body's warm, it's actually not burning through fat. So there's more scientific information, but I think we could go on forever on this. But it has been such a pleasure to have you with us, Connor. I think we just need to meet up and just chat and eat fruit and just chat. (laughs) We're on the same page. But thank you so much for being with us today. It has been an honor, Connor. And I can't wait to hear of the developments and the progression that you and the team make with Dream Fruit. Yeah, thank thank you so much for for having me. Um, Like I said at the at the start, it's been, um, or I love connecting with high, high energy, high vibration people. Um, we are of the same tribe in that regard. So um, yeah, we, I'm sure we will connect and we will sit down and meet. And when, um, when uh, Joanna invites us over to, to Florida, we'll um, <laughs> with us. Yes, for sure. We'll go fruit hunting. We'll go to the farmer's market (laughs) looking for exotic finds, like new finds, guys, because there's some amazing things I've been discovering lately. I've just discovered there's a fruit, there's an apple called um, Forbidding Rose Apple or something. When you cut it, it's like pink. I don't know if you guys seen it, but it's just amazing. Like still discovering these new exotic fruit. Ooh. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many varieties out there that we've, it's, it's, it's like a game. <laughs> yeah, like- definitely. Before we um, let you go, Connor, I just wanted to pick your brain. Yeah. What is your number one go-to fruit? Uh, my number one go-to fruit has just returned. It's in season. It's about, it's in abundance right now. And it is the custard apple of the Atomaya <gasps> variety, um, sometimes known as sugar apple um, or sweet, sweet sap. 
um that's backing uh from we're getting them from brazil at the moment Ooh. that's my go-to fruit my go-to fruits do does change every now and then but because i've missed this one ah oh, it's amazing I, i'll just eat boxes and boxes of it <laughs> no i still haven't i have to be honest i haven't tried the custard apple yet but i'm desperate to so now that you've spoken so well about it i'm definitely going to grab one it's good for your mood as well um is it good it's good for your for your mood and that, i found that very interesting when our nutritionist came back with that because uh we normally think about health benefits being associated with physical um physical benefits but the fact that it's good for your mood and it's good for, for your dopamine receptors and um you, it releases endorphins as well wow this fruit is amazing i think i'll have one of those in my box as well please <laughs> I, will, I, will, I was about to say i think if if we've if they're still currently in stock um i will be sending you one all right thank you <laughs> if not, you'll get it next week sounds good to me well connor it's been a pleasure having you join us today on today's episode um please be more than welcome to join us again in the future um guys i hope you really enjoyed this this fruitful life episode and i hope you found some really useful tips and gems so yeah would you mind leaving us with a wonderful quote before you head out to whom much is given much will be required in life we're going to get tests um and the more you are tested uh the, the, the brighter the reward on, on the other end of those tests wow i love that Thank you so much for sharing your gems with us today. No problem. Thank you for having me.